Hello from our freezing and very frosty North Yorkshire this morning. Temperatures are actually reading minus five, which is pretty incredible. We wanted to talk to you today about the Maxxis all-terrain tires. We've had a bit of time with them now on Molly, going all around the Balkans, many thousands of miles, both on the road and also some quite tricky off-road terrain. So we've had a good sort of feel for how these are. So we'd love to share with you some of our feedback about these tires. Many of you will know that we've run Maxxis for many years now, probably about four years. Starting with the mud terrains we had on Molly, I think we had two sets. We had a 31 inch set and a 33 inch set when we went up in size. Um, but now in more recent times, we have switched to the all terrain, both on the Project Shogun, as you remember, we did the tour of Spain and Portugal and Molly with her most recent trip to the Balkans. So all in all, I would say we're probably looking at around between the mileage from both those trips and what we've done here in the UK, probably about 10,000 miles nearabouts on this set of all terrains. So at this point, we would definitely be looking to do a full tire rotation of all five. Uh, as you can see, the spare is still unused, so it'd be good to switch those up before any subsequent adventures, and that is on the list of jobs to do. And we did do that last time when we ran the mud tires on Molly. We've switched to an all-terrain now. I must say, for these kind of long distance touring adventures, it just makes sense. You get less road noise by far. Although Molly's a noisy old truck anyway, so it doesn't matter too much, but you, you can definitely tell even on Molly. So on a quiet modern vehicle, it's definitely gonna be noticeable. Less drag, less wear. It's a different compound in the all-terrains. They tend to last quite a bit longer than muds because they are a softer compound in the mud terrain or grip in more conditions but overall i would say i've been super impressed with the performance off-road of the all-terrain tire done a lot of rock driving uh, some some mud and slippery grass and things way up in the mountains as we cross the balkan a lot of rock sand and things and these have performed exceptionally well. The only place I would say I noticed that they don't perform as well as the mud terrain is in like real sloppy thick mud which you would expect wouldn't you because they just don't have quite the same bite. On our most recent trips we have definitely noticed an increase in MPG. I'm gonna say that the all-terrain would definitely be down down to that in some way but also we did switch from a 33 inch by 12 and a half mud tire to a 32 by 11 and a half. So that difference in size is probably making up more of that difference, but there will definitely be some fuel savings there. Excuse the ice and snow, but um, if you take a look at the condition of the spare, you can see just how it should look when brand new. And then when we come round, compare it first. Very much, we haven't cleaned or anything these tires, they've just been on there. <laughs> and we look at the, the wear, I don't know how well you can see, but um, it's a very even wear. Molly's uh, tracking must be on point too. And we go around to the front. Front's big heavy car, tend to wear a bit more on the front. You can see definitely there is more wear to be had on the front, so it's definitely time to do that rotation. But overall, a very even wear pattern. And yeah, I'm impressed with, with how well these are going so far. No damage on any of the tires to the side walls, all in very good condition, and that's including a lot of, you know, jagged, rocky terrain way up in the mountains in the Balkans there. So I'm really impressed with the strength of the side walls on these because we've aired them down to less than 18 PSI, uh, not needed any less than that, but um, when you get that tire bulge, the side wall become, can become vulnerable on a tire but these haven't even had a slice, cut, puncture, anything to speak, so impressed with that. Going back to the mud terrain versus all terrain debate, me personally, I would now be happy to run all terrains the majority of the time. The, uh, the savings you get in the fuel, the wear, and the noise, it just really makes sense if you're primarily a touring vehicle. If we were like based here doing green laning as like our primary thing, a lot of winter muddy trails, you know, in Wales and uh, Shropshire, whatever it is, then I would be tempted to still run a slightly larger mud terrain, like the, uh, you know, the 33 by 12 and a half 
Max's big horns that we had for a couple of years before. In my mind, not that I've had this problem so far, it's, uh, but looking at the conditions now, I find these fine. Driving on the road in, in sort of snow, we've only had a bit of snow so far, um, but they are not, they don't have the three peak winter rating. So if you're looking to do a trip to say a country in Europe where that is required, some countries do require it now, these do have the MNS marking on them, which you know it says that it's okay in the mud and snow, but the three peak one some countries do now require in Europe uh, for certain months of the year in the winter, you know, for heavy snow and ice. So that might be something to consider if you uh, were looking to do a trip like that. But saying that, three peak is probably gonna cost you a fair bit more. And for the price range that these Maxxis All Terrain sit at, I think it's a really good deal. Like I say, we've run these for over four years now, both the mud terrains, the big horns, and the 980s all terrains, which is the worm drive we have on here. And I can't fault it, we've never had a tire let us down in all that time. And many of you will know that we have really put both tires to the test over these years. Some of the toughest green lanes here in the UK to real rocky mountainous terrain in the Balkans, in Portugal, a lot of sand use as well, even snow going back a few years. You remember some of those videos, which was fun. I hope we get some more this year. I mean, let's face the reality here. Most of us guys in Europe who are doing a, a trip, it requires thousands of road miles to get to wherever destination you're going, whether it's Morocco, whether it's the Alps, the Pyrenees, you name it, uh, Scandinavia. We've all got to do a lot of road miles to get there. So it kind of just makes sense to have this slight payoff running the all-terrain with all those points we discussed earlier. But then again, if you are primarily, which we're not, you know, on the UK green lanes or pay and play sites every weekend, uh, where it's real rough, sloppy, muddy, and those kind of conditions where you want a big tire, a mud terrain tire, then I would definitely be going with the big horns again. It would kind of, in an ideal world, it'd be best to have a set of both if you could face, uh, maybe have two sets of wheels and you could change over each time depending on what you're doing. Yeah, that would be the ideal. But uh, yeah, we can't have it all, can we? Now, I want to share with you one of my absolute favorite features of Maxxis, which is the dealer locator. I'll stick a link in the description and up top now. But basically, you can go there and you can stick in your postcode address, whatever, and it will show you all of the Maxxis dealers that are within your area and the closest ones to you in order. So it's really worth checking out, guys. I really recommend it. It makes things so much easier when it comes to that new set of tires time when you want to get the fresh rubber put on. So head on over there and have a look at that. It's been awesome to dig a little deeper with you guys into all things tires, you know, mud terrains versus the all terrains. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Maxis for giving us the opportunity over these years to test both of the types of tyres, the mud terrains, all terrains, and especially lately with the Worm Drive 980Es. And if any of you watched last week's video, you'll know that the project vehicle is now released. Everybody knows what it is. Uh, project Hilux is upon us. So, you know, keep an eye, lots of videos to come. We're going to be building that thing up into the ultimate touring overlander. Can't wait to get stuck in. All right, guys, catch you in the next one.